You know I try my best to read each and every comment that you leave here on this channel, I appreciate that. But today this video is a rebuttal on some of the comments made on Propnex, which I've declared before is my biggest stock holding right now in my portfolio. Now I've always avoided you know, mentioning details about my portfolio, but since I've already put it in my private channel, I also declare to you that I'm positive on Propnex. I've actually owned it for quite a while, and I'll be sharing with you my insights on this company. But on the other hand, I'm only a shareholder. I'm not like their agent. So when it comes to the right time to sell, I'm very clear what I'm looking out for. What kind of risk is not comfortable with me and when I'll actually exit this position. So if that clarified, let's dive on to the comments. So this is actually mentioned. You know, I appreciate the comment. Over here, it's mentioned that, you know, Propnex is the biggest and most well-known and so cash rich now, but anytime it can change, it can easily be replaced for example, with carousel for property. There are too many disruptive factors happening now. Now, let me explain to you what carousel is actually disrupting. Let's pull up carousel property. If you haven't already seen carousel, they're actually trying to move property transactions also. And if you see over there in this screenshot, which I've already just picked up without no biases, there is actually a prop next agent's advertisement over there at the left-hand side of things. Now, let's be clear. Carousel is not disrupting Propnex. Carousel is laying a better mousetrap or hopefully trying to lay a better mousetrap than 99.co, than SRX, than Property Guru. They are chasing after their pie. They are not going to hurt Propnex in any or other way. In any case, selling is an art. You know, I'm in sales. That's what I can share with you. Selling requires convincing. Selling requires reassurance to the customer. That's why you see agents in showrooms when there's a launch. You cannot simply just put an IT system there and hope that buyers come to view the showroom and then exit with a unit that they are so happy with. IT cannot solve sales. IT enables the sales agent to compete and provide the answers and present themselves better, more suited for the buyer itself. So again, selling is an art. It cannot be replaced by IT. So with that, let's move on to the second question over there. Propnex does not have a strong defensive mode. Now, it's quite clear where, where the problem lies in because we imagine anybody can set up a property agency, which is quite true. But if we look in terms of the new launch data, this is actually in first quarter 2021. What do you see over there? Market share by number of units. Propnex owns almost half of all new launches. That is huge. What does that tell you? That means if you're a developer right now, would you dare to not invite Propnex to your launch? Very unlikely, right? They can deliver you results. Eh? As a developer, you want your units to be sold. You have pressure from ABSD already. You need to move your units. You have to engage the best agency right now in the market. Right now, there are two big players, Propnex and ERA. It's almost like a duopoly. Each and every launch, you'll see them there. Go down to the showroom, check it out. you understand what I mean. To say that Propnex does not have a defensive mode, that does not understand what their customers really need, which is the lot, which is the property developer itself. I have further information to show you. Let's look at the total number of agents over there. 2019, there's 29,146 agents, but 2021 is inched up slightly to 30,399. Agency growth has only been like 2% thereabouts, but what do we realize? That if we look in terms of Propnex agency size growth, they've been growing at close to 5% or slightly higher even. As of January 2021, uh, 8,918. But as of April 2021, 9,217. What does that tell you? It tells you that they are actually absorbing real estate talent, correct? Property agents from other agencies. They are absorbing them in. It's like, it's like Kung Fu, you like attract in everybody else simply because you are so big you have the best resources each and every small player out there is just not able to compete with you they are losing talent to you the overall industry is growing two percent but you're growing five percent it tells you you're absorbing talent the investment mode for prop next let's pause it and go very slow here is the momentum of attracting talent because this is a skills business this is a people's business whoever has the most momentum is able to attract talent has that mode. And right now, it lies with Propnex. That's why I'm very clear with why I've actually bought it. Who did? Who is actually driving this mode? One person is Kelvin Fong. I've mentioned before in a previous video, which I'll leave links below at the end. 
Calvin Fong actually leads PNG, and that agency is formidable. If you're in real estate business, you, you probably know them, I'm sure. I'm not in real estate business. I, I already know them. So it goes to show he, he and his team is a key driver to Propnex. And with that, that actually lies a risk or so. Because if they leave, same, the momentum, the moat is being damaged. So I'm very clear also when I do need to exit. So hopefully that gives you some clue. As a savvy investor, I look around what can happen, what, can, what kind of risk is there to the business itself. And one example, if you don't really know, Warren Buffett actually owns Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. Very interesting, correct? We always thought that he's into insurance business. We always thought that he's in, into energy and stuff. But this actually is one of his real estate services, small arms. And in the report, he actually, it's actually mentioned that he's actually lost a top agent to Keller Williams. So top agents move thereabouts. One fun day, the top agent will be with a different agency and that's where I do need to know and I do need to evaluate whether Propnex is still going to be a worthy investment or not. So hopefully that gives you a, a strong sense of what is investment mode. Investment mode is talent right now in terms of the selling. Who can deliver results to customers who are developers as well as people selling and buying homes like you and I. So let's look at some numbers that Propnex actually published because this gives you the second part of today's video the crux of where our property industry is moving towards. If we look in terms of brokerage commission, it paints a very clear picture. What do we see in the dark blue pie of the, the chart itself? Project marketing, correct? What is project marketing? Project marketing in simple terms is just new launch, new launch commission sales. You know, Gokoland, they have Midtown and they are selling so well. You know, uh, there's also one Normandon Park they are also selling so well, etc, etc. These are new launches. Project marketing is actually money's commissions from there. They're actually paying very high commissions. I don't know numbers, but I can, I can see and hear and hear secondhand information. But one risk to also take note is while they are paying high commissions to try and move out units quickly, URA has also mentioned before that they are possibly thinking of understanding me better and standardizing commissions because it could affect consumers like you and I. So project marketing is growing big, correct? 135 million to 219 million. That is a huge 50% growth in terms of commissions from there. But what, what other commission growths are we seeing? Let's look at private resale market. It's inched up slightly, not too bad. I'm not too overwhelmed by that number. I kind of think that the HDB resale market seems to be even higher in terms of the trajectory. If we look first quarter 2021, you realize that that's 7,500 units already. If we analyze that, that could be a record in terms of the transaction volume for HDB resale. Now, if you look around data, you realize that HDB resale prices have climbed up yet again in first quarter. If we were to guess where will cooling measures be, will it be additional ABSD? I think rumors are circulating that it could possibly be towards the HDB side because that's where government wants to rein in on affordability. So that is the, 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 the nip of the bud. If they are pre able to prevent unnecessary HDB upgraders, then it could really cool the overall property market. So HDB figures are climbing fast. If there will be cooling measures, my guess is it could be there. But again, I'm not a property expert. I'm just reporting based on what I see. I'm just reporting based on my interpretation as a shareholder. So hopefully you've seen value in it. Smash the like button because it's taken my team some hours to produce this. And again, inviting you to press on subscribe because we'll be launching more videos like this to help you in your financial journey. So to round things off, Propnex has a solid business. It has a moat. Most people don't quite see the moat, but I see it very clearly. They're attracting the best talent and sales requires talent. And with that, if we, see if we see property prices inch up, you should expect transaction volume to inch up. That is called wealth effect because when there's more people feeling wealthy, there's more transactions. Conversely, when prices go down, transaction volume goes down. So it's not an elastic thing. So it's a wealth effect thing. And it, it seems like you know, property sales seem to be pretty pandemic proof. That's what we've learned from 2020. And again, if you're keen to find out more about Propnex, I've actually a previous full tutorial on Propnex. That is my top dividend pick for 2020. Inviting you there. If you haven't seen that already, and I'll sign off from here. Take care and goodbye.